Welcome back, everyone, to more Gibbous a Cthulhu adventure. All right, let's find Pilvra. We had our way blocked by uh, Pesci, who talked a lot like Joe Pesci. Some gangster. Did a guy named Piavra happen to drop by your fine establishment? No offense, brother, but I'm smart enough to know I ain't supposed to be saying who's who and who ain't who, especially in these tense times, you know? Oh, I completely understand, and I appreciate the honesty. I wouldn't call the atmosphere tense exactly, more like completely insane. Oh, uh, you're just too trustworthy for me to keep my guard up, ain't you? Yeah, that's Piavra passed out in the armchair over there. I meant the ugly rumors about the meal. Strange... Oh, never mind. Just my big mouth get me in trouble again. The meal, huh? Yeah, I keep hearing troubles afoot. Trouble? Huh? <laughs> Erin knew that psycho butcher was trouble from the get-go. But oh no, elders know best. Too much talk of double-crossing down the abandoned factory the last few hours, you know what I'm saying? Where there's smoke, there's fire, huh? Daggone forgive me for talking out of school. But if that good-for-nothing meat cobbler really denies the dream of his meal, well, that just ain't no point to nothing anymore. Wouldn't want the dreamer to go hungry, would we? Not after all the blood, sweat, and tears went into raising that thing. Cthulhu for Targon. I'll be on my way. The uh, coffee machine's gone. I have an empty glass we can snatch. Come to pop a little and there's glass. There's over there, fat bastard. Now, what kind of liquidy stuff can we put in this glass? The first thing I see is oil, so let's grab it. Got myself a glass of oil. Neat. How are you doing? It's a teenage girl just hanging out near that wheelbarrow. Playing on her goddamn she phone. She looks like an alright kid, uh, surprisingly. She's sporting that somewhat angsty look they sometimes do. Hey, kid. Hey yourself, you stupid cultist. Dagon judge you, child. Yeah, yeah, take your Dagon and... Let's, uh, maybe not go there. You dare disrespect the cult? What cult? Um, the, uh, the fish cult. Don't you mean the order, you dum-dum? Gosh, they'll just let any mouth breather in your little Girl Scouts club. Yeah, um, we've been, uh, lowering our standards, uh, lately. And there you stand, living proof. So, how's things? What's with the wheelbarrow? What's with the wheelbarrow? Nice conversational spark up, square. A square? Me? Yeah, man, you're like... Like, square squared. Sick burn, dude. I know, right? Well, you do have a wheelbarrow. Yeah, so? Can't be cool next to a wheelbarrow, cause you said so, Pops? Sheesh. This bitch calls me a boomer, I'm gonna smack her. Huh. I guess I really am a square now. Man, I used to be one of the cool kids. Yeah, don't say. Huh, <laughs> yeah, alright. I never was a cool kid. I guess I never really fit in, you know? What? Seriously? Yeah. Must be why I'm walking around in these ridiculous pajamas. Just trying to be accepted somewhere, you know? Oh, man. I... I feel you. Yeah, well, at least I got this. 
What? These stupid robes? Do they make you feel special, dude? I'm the same man underneath, but they like me more in these dumb rags, sister. Sister. It ain't the 70s anymore, daddy-o. Anyway, man, whatever flies, you're dirigible. You know what I mean? Yeah, I dig. Far out, bruv. Can I let you in on a little secret? Wait, maybe I shouldn't. Your, your parents are probably in the esoteric order. Nah, man, they're not. My dad's a fisherman and that's it. All we do is deliver seafood to these wackos. What's the secret? Come on, tell me. In a minute, how come your dad's not in the order? I don't know, he's not into that mumbo jumbo. I mean, he's cool with the festival. Cause we get to sell a lot of fish to you loonies. Not me. I've come to hate fish. Yeah, ooh, tell me about it. But, we're depopulating these waters, man. What the hell do you people need so much fish for? You should just get as much as you need and stop making such a waste. Can't disagree with that. Look, I have no idea what all the fish are for, honest. All right, the, uh, the secret is... I can only listen to smooth 70s jazz. I know it doesn't sound as bad as it really is, but any other kind of music makes me physically sick. Pop rock makes me erupt into horrible boils, and don't get me started on that dubstep thing. Ugh, those wub wub things put me right in the hospital on more than one occasion. And mumble rap. Jesus, the mumble rap. What a da ba da da ba. None of the da ba da da da. He ain't Whoa, fucking lying. Okay. Bunch of stupid asses. Stuck? Is that it? Uh, no, not really. I'm not really a cultist. I'm a private investigator. I snuck in here because I'm working a case. Whoa, are you serious? That is so cool, oh my god. Yep, it's true. Name's Don. Don Katype. Awesome, I'm Joey. Nice to meet you, Joey. Yeah, man. Joey, you think I could borrow that wheelbarrow for a minute? Oh man, I would, but I'd really avoid getting on my dad's nerves right now. You know, I want to get a tattoo or a piercing soon. Something to express myself right. And he's like so against it. Like, all he knows and cares about is fishing stuff. Says, I'm gonna be a fisherman, just like he is. Right, I gotcha. Hmm, let me think for a minute. Hey, Joey. What if you somehow got to express yourself and keep your dad happy, too? How would I do that? I have this fish hook. Think about it. Fish hook lip piercing. Your dad can't hate on that. It just screams fisherman. What do you say? That is so gnarly, dude. Awesome. Whew. All right, then. You think I could get that, uh, wheelbarrow for a couple of minutes? Sure, dude. Knock yourself out. Man, this is gonna look so sick. Woot woot! Yeah, uh, maybe clean it a bit before sticking it in your lip. <laughs> nah, I just go it's for it. sanitary as it Do is. some tetanus uh -huh. or some shit. Thanks, Don. Sure thing. Hey, before I go... You ever heard of someone called the Butcher? Psst. Who hasn't? But officially, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a lot of whispers of betrayal and all kinds of crazy stuff, and everybody in the EOD is a lot more on edge than usual, but none of them are right in the head, so who knows, really? Yeah, this place is crazy, no doubt. What do you know about the meal? Look, man, I shouldn't either know or be telling you this, but a lot of the fish that my dad and most fishermen in town catch go straight into the meal. The fish or the meal? No, you square. The meal is what they've been raising over in Kraken Bay. Duh. Oh, oh, so uh, what is it? Don't know, don't care, and I wouldn't look too closely into it if I were you. Just saying. It's fucking Cthulhu, man. Duh. You know anything about the, uh, the dreamer? Feeding the great old one, oh, the man, elder god. Don't say that out loud. They don't like that. Well, 
paradoxically they speak his name out loud all the time, but geez, careful. You mean Dagon? Bigger than Dagon, Broham. Much bigger. Anyway, it's just a dumb delusion like everything else the Order worships. But it keeps me popping business, so, you know. Uh huh. Later, Joey. Don't blow my cover, alright? Watch your back, Donnie boy. Oh, there's my wheelbarrow. It's like, where the hell? Oh, we gotta get Fat Boy slippery. All right. That seems to have loosened the armchair's grip on Piovra's rotund frame. Rotund bastard. Time to pop a cultist out of an armchair. We'll crowbar his fat ass off of there. There you go, one Piovra. Well. Here we are in the presence of Chief Piavra. Piavra is here! But hard to tell how present he really is, but it's him all right. Ain't no discussion about that. All right, go right ahead. And Pescatori? Yeah? Well, I'm convinced he's long gone. But if by some dark miracle you do get a hold of him, show him what the EOD does to traitors. Ooh, show him good! You betcha. See you later, Pesce. Let him through, boys! Cthulhu for Dagen. All right, I was in. A cold, bluish-green light revealed parts of rusty machinery here and there. Everything else was drowned in inky black. Probably as black as the Butcher's deeds, but that remained to be seen. I was in. Just one regret. I'll never know who Randolph really was. All right, we are inside the abandoned factory. Got a giant engine over here. Huge, huge, huge engine. It's the lever what puts the huge engine in motion. Some kind of container, apparently. Don't forget to put that power tool back up once you're done with it, D. Ugh, the lid's all stuck with some disgusting crud. Crowbar it. Let's pop this baby open. All right, got myself a power tool. You gas up that huge engine through this. It's a hatch in this, uh, this thing, but it's dark as night inside. Freeze, you ugly cultist! Isn't that assuming a bit too much given how dark it is in here? Push your luck when there's an angry little kid pointing a hand cannon at you, batty! That's little Priscilla. Well, that is concerning. I don't know that I want to live in a society where an innocent child can easily get her hands on a... Would you like for mice to really appreciate you? Uh, uh, what? Um... Unless you really do, don't make me turn you into Swiss cheese! Okay, I froze. But, uh, I'm somehow a little warm at the same time, too. <laughs> hey, you, you really startled me. I'm not moving. Good, good. Okay, now what? Now you get to explain just what you're creeping around in the dark here for, cultist. I, I'm really not a cultist. Honest. Mm, okay, let me see here. 
cultist robes? Check. Lurking around in an abandoned factory? Check. I'm a private investigator in deep cover. That's not the only thing you're deep in, creep. What are you up to here? Don't lie. I can tell. I was just looking for you. Someone said a kid got lost in this abandoned factory, so... So here I am, your savior. Look, I'm not firing any warning shots because the noise will alert your buddies. So rely on me making all my bullets count. Read that loud and clear. I'm investigating. I'm looking for a... Uh, well, at this point, I might call him a criminal mastermind, really. The Butcher. And how do I know you're not one of his henchmen? Trying to lie your way out. Oof. Can't think of anything, really. There's just been so much going on lately, it's hard to wrap my head around everything. Let alone explain myself to a kid with a huge gun point at my noggin. I've got time. Ugh. To make an uh, extremely long and convoluted story short, I'm helping a friend unhumanize his cat. I think. Turns out, uh, when they can talk, they're real grouches. So, I'm trying to find out. Wait. What's this friend's name? Buzz. Oh, we'll talk about a coincidence. Is he a librarian? Only librarian I know what's got a talking cat, yeah. Wait, you're not shooting me now, are you? Whatever way they wronged you, I had nothing to do with it. Kitty can be a real... They actually got Mr. Gillsby back for me. I hate to say it, but they're kind of all right in my book. I, I, I mean, I hate them less than you cultists. Wait, you know Buzz and Kitty? Yeah, we swapped dolls a while ago, back in Darkham. Well, that sounds perfectly normal. Unlike what you are doing to the fishies, you, you bad, bad people! I don't even like fish. I, I mean, I don't like eating them. I've got nothing against them. So then why are you killing so many of them? Again, not a cultist, but it might have something to do with whatever the butcher was working on in this very building. Yeah, well... We'll shed some light on that situation soon enough. You really shouldn't be in here alone. What'll your parents think? They think I'm still in my bedroom. I made sure of that. Can I ask where you got that huge gun from? Hmm, knocked out some cultist leader in my way in here. Anything else? Uh, maybe later. I'm really not a cultist. My name's Don. Don Archetype. Hmm, Don doesn't sound like what a cultist name would be. I figured they'd all have names like... Aljuis? Mm, nah. Do you believe I'm not a cultist now? Not entirely. You'd better actually prove it. Alright, uh, I'm game I guess. What are you thinking? If you're really here for the reasons you say you are, we're both looking for the same thing. The Butcher's Laboratory. Chop chop! I'll be supervising from up here. Sounds like a plan, uh, Miss... Priscilla. Are you sure? I'm sure! Get to it! Miss Priscilla. She's a bad little bitch. It ain't working. No shit. Discontinuity. <laughs> Little Priscilla following me around. Strange. There's a discontinuity in the pattern here. I know Kung Fu. Aha! It's a heavy sliding door. Maybe not on the door itself. Thank God for technology. I stepped inside and felt my teeth instantly chatter. This was some kind of cryo room. I didn't bring thicker underwear. <sighs> Liquid nitrogen spray. Mm. 
That was a little Priscilla and some junk. All kinds of junk. The industrial flavor. Let's go and grab this gas canister as well. Come to Papa. Sweet gasoline. There's a blue liquid inside this tube. Liquid nitrogen, perhaps? Oh, cool. I'm making a Skyrim character. It's that creature from Half Life. Never a mind, it's Otis. Thank you, sir, and young miss, if day it indeed be. You will forgive my disorientation, I trust. I've been holed up in here for quite a while. I suppose thanks are in order for opening that blasted door. Truly appreciate it. Ah, uh, sure, no problem. Oh, do forgive my rudeness. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm quite sure that my name is Otis, but I'm afraid much of my biography is as much a question mark to myself as it is to you. I'm not wrong in surmising that this is the first time you're engaging in conversation with a human-octopus hybrid, correct? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words here. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Octopus Person. I like you. You're kind of a fishy, so you're okay. Haha, <laughs> well, yes, young miss. I assume I am. Aren't I? Please, call me Otis. Nice to meet you, Otis. I'm Priscilla. And this guy over here is Don. He's a private detective. Yes, she believes me. But anyway. So, Otis, how'd you become an octopus hybrid? I mean, of course, if that's not too painful to discuss. Oh, not at all! Details, I'm afraid, are pretty sparse and amnesia seems to be a side effect of the process. I do remember my name was Otis and I, well, I died. I'm afraid I can't remember the circumstances. I did wake up at the hands of these persons that were operating on me. Strange sensation, to be sure, but I was alive again. Quite a blessing, sir, I assure you. You have a uh, quite the positive outlook on life for a, a talking head. How could I not? I was dead, and now I live. Is there a greater joy imaginable? I think not. That's a refreshingly positive attitude. Thank you! I was always an optimist, and as you can see, good things have happened to me! Indeed. Did you see the butcher? Yeah, did you? I'm afraid I don't know what butcher you speak of. Well, everything's a bit foggy, you understand. All I can remember are masked men rushing about with all kinds of strange instruments. Their speech was muffled, so it was pretty hard to make anything out, I'm afraid. Dang it. I do remember them referring to me as a dry, if that helps at all. Uh, dry. Any idea what that means? One can only assume it has some negative implications, but that's pure speculation on my part. Do you know where the laboratory is? Yes, I do. You, you don't want to go in there, do you? Indeed, we're chatting away when we should be getting out of here at this very instant. No one's going anywhere until we reach the lab. Oh dear, I must be frank with you, young miss. I intend to leave the premises as soon as possible and suggest you do the same. Come on, Otis, work with us. You ain't gotta go back in there, just help us get in. Oh, heavens, well, all right. I suppose I owe you a debt of gratitude. The laboratory is right outside this chamber and to the right. Thanks, Otis. Hey, kid. I think I thought of a way to get us past those huge doors, but I need you to trust me, okay? What do you mean? I'm gonna need that gun of yours. Fine, I trust you. Do not let me down! That's Whoa. a promise, Priscilla. Don't piss off, Priscilla. This kid could fucking eviscerate us. Oh, 
Oh, uh, what's this improvised sleeping area? Didn't really expect to see mattresses and pillows lying around in here, but there they are. Maybe they had an overpopulation problem? Place seems empty now. Sleep more, work more, raise more, sleep more, work more, raise more. Alrighty then. Lock it! Lock it! Leave the shot! Shoggif. Get this baby powered up. Power Here you up, go, big buddy. There you go. I would gotten the engine to run. At least now, any loud noises would be covered by the engine's humming. Those are like big metal testicles. But it's really like kind of a battering ram. A giant metal so tube battering ram. Here goes. Oh, that gun's powerful. Shit. I got rid of the glass above the door to the lab. Seeing as you're the only one with suction cups, think you could do us a solid and get inside the lab through there? Oh dear! I suppose I can. To be perfectly honest, I'm shaking in my non-existent boots just at the thought of going back in there. Come on, you can do it, Otis. Yeah, you go, Otis. I appreciate your support, dear friends. <sighs> Alright, here I go! Oh dear! Oh lord! Oh, it's it's all coming back now! The pits! The horrible pits! The non-dries! Their horrible gnashing and gnawing and... <coughs> oh, this is too much to bear! Oh god, what is that? Oh! Oh, what do you know? It's a coin! <laughs> oh, and of, of course, n no pockets to put it in. Great! Oh god, the abominations! Focus, Otis! Focus! Uh, 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 all right, it's open. It's a melodramatic little octopus, man. Oh, thanks, Otis. You are incredibly brave. Gee, yes, C uh, could I please go now? There are horrible things in there, and I don't wish to spend another second in their vicinity. Where are you headed to, Otis? I, uh, oh, it appears I really have no place to go, do I? <sighs> yeah, I thought that might be the case. Look, here's my office back in Darkham. The key's under the doormat. Make yourself at home until you, uh think things through, all right? How exactly is he going to make it there without attracting attention? You're right. Hey, I have an idea. Priscilla, you should mail him to my address. You know, like a, like a pet or something. I do want to see the laboratory and save the fishies. <laughs> you said it yourself. Otis is sort of a fishy, and he needs your help. Once you mail him, you can come back and we'll explore together. What do you say? I mean... I guess you're right, but don't explore too much without me, you hear? You can count on me, partner. Don't get ahead of yourself. See ya! Many thanks again! All the best! Oh, it's jolly good to get a second chance, isn't it? So many opportunities! Like? Hmm, let's see here. Why, why I could be on telly, my dear. The one true talking head out there. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> See, little one, always keep a positive outlook. Ew, ow! T just a second, stepped in some oily thing here. Ew. Well, I guess it's slithered, actually, isn't it? <laughs> You're funny, Otis. Well, that was surreal. <sighs> Alright, let's see what secrets this place holds. Yes, let's do that.
Another pit. Another pit. Another unseen creature writhing at the bottom. The stuff that nightmares are made of. Terrifying. <laughs> it's a dark, deep pit, but down there I can just make out something wrong. Squirming around. Glimpses of eyes, teeth, and tentacles coming in and out of the darkness. Man, am I happy for that grate. A plain, scratched metal panel of sorts. Looks like this door somehow slides into the wall. No visible handle. Its only feature is a big red button. I don't like my chances of surviving that. Gotta think of another way. Alright folks, that wraps it up for this episode. Stay tuned for more Gibbos. A Cthulhu adventure.